All right, greetings everybody. This is Chaplain Bob Walker. This is the continuation of the Jeremiah commentary series. Turn your King James Bible to Jeremiah chapter 2 and verse 1. Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me saying, Go and cry in the ears of Jerusalem, saying, Thus saith the Lord, I remember thee, the kindness of thy youth, the love of thine espousals, when thou wentest after me in the wilderness in a land that was not sown. Uh, if you don't know what espousals means, well, look at the word uh, inside the word, S-P-O-U-S. -S. That's where you get the word spouse. Espousals it has reference to a marriage. Wasn't the Lord married to Israel, his bride? Oh, yeah. Well, modern day demon nominational preachers will try to trick you and make you think that Israel and the church are two different things. Oh, no. Well, you know what? Go back to the Old Testament, which they don't want you to read, and you'll figure out that God only made a covenant with Israel. He didn't make a covenant with the whole world. Absolutely not. The love of thine espousals when thou wentest after me in the wilderness in a land that was not sown. Israel was holiness unto the Lord and the first fruits of his increase. All that devour him shall offend. Evil shall come upon them, saith the Lord. Hear ye the word of the Lord, O house of Jacob, and all the families of the house of Israel. Thus saith the Lord, what iniquity, you know, what, what sin, what iniquity have your fathers found in me? That they are gone far from me and have walked after vanity and are become vain. Vain means worthless. So the Lord's asking them, what sin did your fathers find in me, the Lord God, that they left me? They left me and then they walk after useless, worthless things. Verse 6. Neither said they, Where is the Lord that brought us up out of the land of Egypt, that led us through the wilderness, through a land of deserts and of pits, through a land of drought and of the shadow of death? Through a land that no man passeth through, and where no man dwelt. That's right. The Lord brought Israel out of Egypt through the wilderness, a desert, a land with no water, the land of the shadow of death, a land where no other man had ever passed through, and where no men live. Why? It's devoid of water. Verse 7, And I brought you into a plentiful country to eat the fruit thereof and the goodness thereof. But when ye entered, ye defiled my land and made mine heritage an abomination. The priests said not, Where is the Lord? And they that handled the law knew me not. The pastors also transgressed against me, and the prophets prophesied by Baal, and walked after things that do not profit. Baal's just a name, uh, means Lord, and it was associated with Satanism. The prophets prophesied by Baal, and walked after things that do not profit. Wherefore, 
I will yet plead with you, saith the Lord, and with your children's children will I plead. To pass over the isles of Chittim, and see, and send unto Kedar, and consider diligently, and see, if there be such a thing. Hath a nation changed their gods, which are yet no gods? But my people have changed their glory for that which doth not profit. Oh yeah. The nation of Israel changed their Lord to a bunch of devils. Things that don't profit. Be astonished, O heaven, O ye heavens, at this time, and be horribly afraid. Be ye very desolate, saith the Lord. For my people have committed two evils. Two evils. You know, one and two. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters, and hewed them out cisterns, broken cisterns that can hold no water. Fountains of living water. Where do we read about that in the Bible? Hmm. All right, verse 14. Is Israel a servant? Is he a firstborn slave? Why is he spoiled? Hmm. Israel, northern Israel, had been taken captive into by the Assyrians. Judah, however, is awaiting the same fate. Verse 15. The young lions roared upon him and yelled, and they made his land waste. His cities are burned without inhabitant. Also the children of Noph and ten of fiends have broken the crown of thy head. Hast thou not procured this unto thyself, and that thou in that thou hast forsaken the Lord thy God when he led thee by the way? And now what has that uh, and now what hast thou to do in the way of Egypt? To drink the waters of Sihor? Or what hast thou to do in the way of Assyria to drink the waters of the river? Now, what did we just read about uh, living water? Well, in John 7, 38, Jesus said, He that believeth on me, as the scripture hath said, out of his belly shall ro flow out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. And then Revelation 7, verse 15. Therefore, as they before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple, and he that sitteth on the throne shall dwell among them. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more, neither shall the sun light on them, nor any heat. For the Lamb, which is in the midst of the throne, shall feed them, and shall lead them unto living fountains of waters. Living fountains of waters. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. So here it is, instead of getting the waters of the Lord, they want to get their water from Egypt and Assyria. Verse 18, Jeremiah 2, 18. And now what hast thou to do in the way of Egypt? To drink the waters of Sihor? Or what hast thou to do in the way of Assyria? To drink the waters of the river? Verse 19. Thine own wickedness shall correct thee, and thy backslidings shall reprove thee. Know therefore and see that it is an evil thing and bitter that thou hast forsaken the Lord thy God, and that my fear is not in thee, saith 
the Lord God of hosts. For of old time I have broken thy yoke and burst thy bands. And, you know, let's face it, they were in Egypt. They had a yoke and they had, you know, basically they were slaves. For of old time I have broken thy yoke and burst thy bands, and thou saidest, I will not transgress. Oh yeah, I, I won't break your law. When upon every high hill and under every green tree thou winnest, thou wanderest, playing the harlot. What's a harlot? It's a whore. It's just another name for whore. It's one of those old English words. All right, in verse 21, Lord says, Yet I had planted thee a noble vine. Hmm. A noble vine. What does Jesus say in John 15, in verse 5? He says, I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, ye can do nothing. All right, Jeremiah 2.21. Yet I had planted thee a noble vine. Now remember, Israel was called, well, let's take a look. Well, let's take a look at Isaiah 5 real quick. Verse 1. Now will I sing to my well-beloved a song of my beloved touching his vineyard. A song of my beloved touching his vineyard. My well-beloved hath a vineyard in a very fruitful hill. And he fenced it and gathered out all the stones thereof and planted it with the choicest vine and built a tower in the midst of it, and also made a wine press therein. And he looked that it should bring forth grapes, and it brought forth wild grapes. Now, I don't know if any of you have noticed, but uh, they've cultivated fruit for a reason, for, you know, good production, good taste. Uh, the wild varieties not necessarily the same. Verse 3. And now, O inhabitants of Jerusalem and men of Judah, judge, I pray you, betwixt me and my vineyard. What could have been done more to my vineyard that I have not done in it? Wherefore, when I looked that it should bring forth grapes, brought it forth wild grapes. And now go to... I will tell you what I will do to my vineyard. I will take away the hedge thereof. Um, you know, a hedge is like a fence, right? I will take away the hedge thereof, and it shall be eaten up, and break down the wall thereof, and it shall be trodden down. Well, you know what happens? All the wild animals get in there and trample it down, and they eat it up. Those of you that have deer, oh boy, what can deer do to a... Uh, a garden. Oh boy, they can get fattened up pretty quick, huh? Verse 6. And I will lay it waste. It shall not be pruned nor digged, but there shall come up briars and thorns. I will also command the, the clouds that they rain no rain upon it. Listen to this carefully. For the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel. For the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel. And the men of Judah his pleasant plant. And he looked for judgment, but behold oppression. For righteousness, but behold a cry. Okay, well, does that make sense now? Jeremiah 2.21, Yet I had planted thee a noble vine, holy 
a right seed. How then art thou turned into the degenerate plant of a strange vine unto me? For though, for though thou wash thee with nit nitre, and take thee much soap, yet thine iniquity is marked before me, saith the Lord God. Oh yeah, your 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 sins are so deep, soap and water, uh, that ain't, ain't going to do it. You know, uh, back in the old days, if uh, sometimes parents, if they caught their kids cussing, they'd wash their mouths out with soap and water. Now that'd be called child abuse. Verse 23. How canst thou say, I am not polluted. I have not gone after Balaam, Balaam, the false god. See thy way in the valley. Know what thou hast done. Thou art a swift dromedary transversing her, her ways. Uh, dromedary is a type of camel, by the way. Verse 24. A wild ass used in the wilderness that snuffeth up the wind at her pleasure. In her occasion, who can turn her away? All they that seek her will not weary themselves. In her month, they shall find her. Withhold thy foot from being unshod and thy throat from thirst. But thou sayest, There is no hope, no, for I have loved strangers, and after them will I go. Yeah, instead of going after the Lord, they're going to go after strangers. Verse 26. As the thief is ashamed when he is found, so is the house of Israel ashamed. They, their kings, their princes, and their priests, and their prophets, saying to a stock, what's a stock? It's a piece of wood. Saying to a stock, thou art my father, and to a stone, thou hast brought me forth. Well, if you believe in evolution, uh, you're basically telling a stone that uh, you were born from a stone. Yeah, you know, uh, it rained on the rocks for millions of years and all the elements and chemicals went into this pool of water and then lightning struck it. Crack! And uh, poof, it came alive and crawled out. And you went from goo to the zoo to you. Uh, kudos to Kent Hoven there, by the way. And to a stone thou hast brought me forth. For they have turned their back unto me, and not their face. But in the time of their trouble they will say, Arise, save us. But where are thy gods that thou hast made thee? Yeah, let them arise if they can save thee in the time of thy trouble. For according to the number of thy cities are thy gods, O Judah. So I guess every city had a different god, right? Yeah, when you get in trouble, don't come crying unto me. Cry unto the gods that you picked. Cry to them. Let them save you. Verse 29. Wherefore will ye plead with me? All uh, ye all have transgressed against me, saith the Lord. In vain have I smitten your children. They received no correction. Your own sword hath devoured your prophets like a devout, uh, destroying lying, lion. Wow. I guess the uh, looks to me like the uh, Lord sent them prophets. They didn't like the message, so they killed them with the sword. They killed them. Verse 31. O generation, see the word of the Lord. Have I been a wilderness unto Israel, a land of darkness? Wherefore say my people, we are lords. We will come no more unto thee. Oh, yeah. Hey, I'm my own God. 
Oh, yeah. I am my own God. I don't need the Lord. I guess that's their little saying. All right, verse 32. Can a maid forget her ornaments? You know, her earrings and what have you. Or a bride, her attire. Uh, you ever seen a bride at a wedding without her uh, wedding dress on? Not me. Oh, and I did hundreds, hundreds of weddings. I mean, literally hundreds of weddings. I did weddings for probably, I don't know, well over five years. And I was busy probably 45 to 50 weeks uh, we, every, every uh, year. I mean, it was rare when I had weddings, no weddings for a weekend. And I've never seen a bride without her wedding dress. Uh, maybe the maybe the groom did after the wedding, or you know, but uh, not me. Can a maid forget her ornaments, or a bride her attire? Yet my people have forgotten me days without number. Why trimmest thou thy way to seek love? Therefore hast thou also taught the wicked ones thy ways. Also in thy skirts is found the blood of the souls of the poor innocents. Oh yeah, you murdered the poor innocent people. I have not found it by secret search, but upon all these. Yet thou sayest, because I am innocent, surely his anger shall turn from me. Behold, I will plead with thee, because thou sayest, I have not sinned. In 1 John 1.18, I read, If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Now, there's another verse that says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Well, that's Paul, I believe, in Romans. But don't hold me to that, because I'm not 100% sure. And all these people that love to say all means all, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. All have sinned. Uh, so that means Jesus sinned, right? Jesus sinned? I don't think so. Yes, that was in Romans 3 and verse 23. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So did Jesus sin and come short of the glory of God? Uh, well, Chaplain Bob, the Bible says for uh, God wants to save all of us. You know, the whole world. You know, God loves everybody. Uh, so does all really mean all, all the time? Uh, no, it doesn't. How about Hebrews 4 and verse 14? Seeing then that we have a great high priest that has passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings, a uh, feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Christ with, was without sin. So, does all mean all? Not always. It does not always mean all. You know, it's like when the Bible says Eve was the mother of all living. Was Eve the mother of goldfish? How about gazelles? Lions? Eagles? Vultures? You know, come on. And then they'll point to, you know, well, God wants to save all the world. 
I don't think so. Jeremiah 2, 35, Yet thou sayest, because I am innocent, surely his anger shall turn from me. Behold, I will plead with thee, because thou sayest, I have not sinned. Why gaddest thou about so much to change thy way? Thou also shalt be ashamed of Egypt, as thou wast ashamed of Assyria. Yea, thou shalt go forth from him in thine hands upon thine head. For the Lord hath rejected thy confidences, and thou shalt not prosper in them. Oh, yeah. You know what? There's not a lot to me. To me, there's not a lot of difference between Jeremiah's time and today. I don't care what country in the West you go to, United States, the UK, the EU, it's all about the same. God's judgment is upon these wicked nations because they have they've forgotten the Lord. Sadly, the tares have uh, grown among the wheat. And when England honored the Lord with the King James Bible, they had an empire. And at the end of World War II, the United States was arguably the most powerful nation this world, up to that point in time, was the most powerful nation in the world at that time. Nobody could have challenged the United States. But we've turned into evil. And then Europe, during the Reformation, you have the Renaissance. But people turn their backs on the Lord. Look at them now. Flooded with third world aliens. Do you know the name Muhammad is the number one popular, most popular boy's name in um I forget if it's just London or if it's all of England. Muhammad. The wild man of the desert. Yeah. No, thank you. So, has anything changed since the days of Jeremiah? I'm telling you, Jeremiah is depressing. To me, it is depressing. But the Lord has his remnant. That's about it. So, all right. Well, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and his only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb of God slain from the foundation of the world. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' name. Amen.